Hello Flock Wine Club members, welcome to the Okanagan and welcome to Blasted Church Vineyards. Thank you for being a member of the Flock Wine Club. I hope you really enjoy your Flock Wine Club shipment for the summer of 2021. In this video, we're joined by John Bailey, our viticulturalist, and Evan Saunders, our winemaker, as they talk about all of the wines that you received in your Flock summer shipment. There's nobody who knows these wines better than they do, and I'll bet you'll learn a lot about each one of these wines. Enjoy. I hope you have a great time watching this video. I hope you enjoy your wines as well. Have a great summer and thank you for being a member of the flock. Uh, welcome to our second uh, virtual tasting for our flock members. Uh, Hello. <laughs> uh, my name is Evan Saunders. I'm the winemaker here at Blasted Church Vineyards. And I'm John Bailey, the vineyard manager here with uh, Evan and the team. So uh move over into the rosé category now with our kind of return into into rosé production so this is our 2020 blau Frankish rosé look at that color beautiful uh so once again actually a state grown fruit uh, so up here on our location on skaha bench mm -hmm. uh so blau Frankish being the the grape varietal so an austrian red uh the vine's kind of getting up there almost uh almost 30 years old now yeah uh, so for this one in the winery, we did a couple of different treatments. 50% uh, of it, we just whole cluster pressed straight to tank. And then the other half of the fruit, we just de-stemmed straight to press and pressed off the tank to kind of keep that lighter color, um, but still get that kind of beautiful fruit, kind of peaches and or strawberries and cream profile. Yeah. This varietal, Blau Frankish, we used to call it Lemberger, it has both names. Um, you might have seen that on some of our labels. It's a red grape that has really big bunches and potentially really big berries if you're not careful. So we work a lot with our uh, irrigation to dial in the berry size on this one. Um, and it's also very late ripening. So it's also our last pick of the year. Um, what, how do you say it? The day before it's supposed to snow, yeah. we pick it then. <laughs> ideally, ideally the morning of, yeah. Uh, ideally, yeah. which we have done before. Yeah. Um, so that's because that acid is, um, it, it kind of sticks around while the sugars take a while to ripen so it's ideal for rosé uh, it also has this beautiful color to it and um, so I think you see that coming through in the rosé form mm -hmm. yeah and so it starts out in tank and then we move it down into barrel about halfway through fermentation just for aging on lees to kind of once again kind of build that texture build an additional layer um, not necessarily to bring any of that oak profile but just to kind of create the richness in that extra extra layer to the wine it's a serious rosé serious rosé yes i mean you could drink it as, as fast as you could drink anything mm -hmm. but it also has it has that great kind of like a, that texture to it mm -hmm. that weight a bit of grip like you get that kind of phenolic tannin mm -hmm. but just enough to make it interesting it's beautiful fresh acidity yeah so uh we're on to our 2017 cross to bear uh, so it's 100 percent cabernet franc uh from Oliver and the Soyuz of so the the red brick and ash vineyards in a Soyuz, and then a little bit from the Suncrest in Oliver. Uh, so once again, each uh, kind of each vineyard brings its own its own character to the wine. 2017 down there was a great year. It, yeah, it didn't get too too hot. It got hot as it always does, but. Um, yeah, it was just such a nice balance. 2017 and 2018 gave a really nice balance down south, uh, which you can struggle with. Mm -hmm. At times it will just get way too hot. And then um, that small crop, kind of that naturally yeah. small uh, 2017 crops, you got a great kind of evolution, phenolic evolution, um, flavor profiles here into kind of the the ripeness. Um, you get that kind of, yeah, the riper side of things, but still um, just by picking decisions and stuff like that, you get sort of still that balance, that true kind of cab franc, yeah. uh, kind of brambleberry with that kind of herbal edge, which um, I always find to be kind of the hallmark of a, a classic cab franc. Yeah, it's a balance with cab franc. You don't want that herbal edge to go into a green, mm -hmm. which it easily can, especially mm -hmm. on the cooler years if you don't manage it well, right? But man, when you get it and it just adds this great kind of nuance mm -hmm. to that, that fruit aspect, that fruit profile, and they can be great wines. Uh, so this wine's in barrel for about 22 months. Um, yeah. Usually around 50% of the oak is new, um, but oak source sort of specifically not to bring um, 
that dominant oak heavy profile but kind of that texture and that freshness um, which I know it sounds kind of funny to say freshness with kind of a high proportion of new oak but it you know proper sourcing and all that sort of stuff that's that is what we get but you get it. I mean like <clears throat> the oak is there mm -hmm. but it's very balanced with this kind of rich fruit that mm -hmm. has that nice freshness to it so mm -hmm. it's it's a very like well balanced oak use yeah which will also lend to the ageability of this yeah. wine as well right it will kind of yeah continue to sort of fade further and further into the background as everything else sort of sort of comes together so always look at the the revered series of wines is sort of always the you can drink them now it is it's drinking incredibly well mm -hmm. um but also something that you can hang on to uh for years to come and will sort of reward reward you more uh, yeah. in the cellar if you you know want to hold on to a few bottles so we're on to our 2017 nothing sacred so this is our revered series it's a bordeaux blend uh kind of the classic uh, Okanagan Bordeaux blend. So Merlot dominant, Cab, or Cab Sauve, Cab Franc, Petit Verdot, and Malbec, kind of in descending descending order. Uh, so fruit sourced from our estate, then down through Oliver and Asoyus again. That really like kind of leathery profile yeah. straight away. The fruits there, um, kind of everything that you would look for on the nose. Yeah, there's lots going on there. Mm -hmm. if, yeah. Yeah, the blend is, is is super indicative of actually kind of the the nose at this point. Like you get that yeah. really plumminess, that yeah. leathery kind of character that the Merlot can bring, and then the Cab Sauve with that kind of cassis and blueberry, and then on down with the um, Malbec kind of providing that big fruit lift and the yeah. But there's also this kind of earthy minerality mm -hmm. behind all that, this dustiness. Yeah. Um, there's like a savory savoriness yeah. to everything, which uh, it's always nice to kind of have that as opposed to just that kind of just pure fruit bomb you do get that mm -hmm. that the other that's character it. stepping in yeah it does have yeah that richness through it the you know great tannin uh great finish really long in the finish it has um kind of similar to the cross to bear that ageability uh pretty happy to hang on for quite a while it is showing showing really well today um as far as in the cellar goes everything's handled separately um from kind of harvest through fermentation and aging and then we taste through everything to assemble the final blend so we basically pick our eight favorite barrels kind of how they come together and then put that together for the final blend uh, so this one ended up around 50 percent new french oak as well yeah. which once again shows up but doesn't dominate uh, if you think about it it shows up yes but that fruit is so uh kind of i want to say rich with the qualifier that it's again very well balanced with the acidity the texture a wine that's will reward you for drinking now it's drinking beautifully but once yeah. again will um, probably reward you even more uh, down the line yeah next up is our holy moly 2017 holy moly uh, it's 100 percent petite verdot so kind of the rarely seen okanagan wine especially but even uh, kind of globally a rarely seen single varietal wine it is a tricky grape variety, one that's one, ab one of my absolute favorites to work with. Um, I think I we just, talked about how horrible it was to farm last yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, it just, it just wants doesn't to, want to make you wine grapes. No, it just wants to crop itself just to death, to, essentially, yeah, yeah. and it just would never ripen it that. So it's a ton of work in the vineyard yeah. to, to get it together. But when it does, um, when you do, so this combines fruit from a couple of vineyards down in the Soyuz, the Lloyd and the ash vineyard it does kind of reward you with that kind of floral savory yeah there's like a lot ton of like that leather and it's like a really really uh complex one kind of dark fruits everybody always wonders why this why wine from petit verdot always makes big style unctuous wines it's because the skin to uh fruit to juice ratio on the grapes is uh very high so you have these tiny berries with thick skin and the skin gives you a lot of these um, elements that we're talking about in terms of aromatics and phenolics and structure and tannin and dryness. And it also gives you this dark color. When you farm it, it's kind of a labor of love uh, to some degree. Petit Verdot gives you a, a lot of a lot. A lot of a lot, yeah. If, yeah. Uh, Except for fruit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they have to work it really, really gently in the cellar. Um, otherwise you will, you end up with this an absolute monster of wine. There's a ton of acid, there's a ton of tannin ton of color so for us it's trying to 
kind of dial all that in, get the um, you know expression of Petit Verdot, but with uh, something that can kind of stand on its own as, as opposed to a, a blending component. That's 22 months in barrel, like 45% of the oak is new French oak. I've also never met anybody that doesn't like this wine. Mm -hmm. So uh, moving into our small blessing series of wines with our 2018 Malbec. Uh, so this, this, is a, this is a great wine. This is, I know every time I taste it, I'm super excited, yeah. um, which I'm not always super excited about uh, BC Malbec, but this is uh, kind of a, a very particular vineyard. So this is from the Similkameen Vineyard, or Similkameen Vineyard, uh, it's called Mariposa. It has a super severe, steep sloping, rocky, kind of just crazy spot for a vineyard. Yeah, it is. Very, very hard to manage. <clears throat> in the Similkameen, you get very different soil profiles to the Okanagan. In the Okanagan, there's glacial retreat, which gives you a lot of silt and sand and some rocky outcrops. And in the Similkameen, you have a lot of, uh, for lack of a better term, scree slopes that fall down and give you a vineyard over time. Um, so lots more rock. Uh, Lots of just big rocks mixed yeah. with little rocks yeah. <laughs> and a bit of sand and a bit of silt, but um, not fun to drive a tractor on and uh, fantastic for wine, unfortunately. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, Malbec always has this thing where it, it wants to have really big berries, so kind of where Petit Verdot has uh, the tiny berries, so the kind of skin to juice ratio is um, sort of more favorable. Malbec wants to go the other way, so you kind of end up with like a watery sort of profile, but the Kind of that rockiness of the soil you don't have a lot of water hanging around so you do get like a really small concentrated malbec grape yep um, which translates through 100 percent into the wine as does the vineyard you get that minerality it's just like crushed violets and blueberries yeah. and just richness it's just so pretty yeah and it's it's a really well planted vineyard um in respect that it, it has this really good connection to the land around it it's not just a vineyard by itself mm -hmm. um Sorry, it is a vineyard by itself. It's not a vineyard surrounded by other vineyards or surrounded by other uh, tree crops. It's it's truly just uh, a bit of land made room to uh, plant in amongst uh, all the wild brush, and it really kind of gives it that electric energy. And hard hard to put into words, but it does have like such a a unique profile with that. There is like that energy on the palate, that yeah. intensity of fruit yeah. and florals. Um, it's almost like a once again back to like that citrus rind thing through the on the nose um and kind of balance through on the palate with that you know the explosion of fruit as you would expect from malbec but kind of richness throughout which you don't always get with malbec in that it's kind of typically a yeah a, a blending varietal rustic but rich mm -hmm. it's a cool wine you got to try it to obviously you all will have the opportunity to which is nice um great wine yeah and last up is our Small Blessings Cab Sauve, so our 2018 Small Blessings Cab Sauve. 100% uh, estate grown fruit, so once again you see the Skaha bench designation on the label. So this wine kind of gets special treatment to start to finish throughout in the vineyard, uh, keeping crops very low. Very low. Uneconomically low, yeah, right? I, might, I believe. You might say. <laughs> um, they're old vines, they're uh, as gnarly as it gets it's really uh, beautiful vines um the berries are small we were able to really dial in our irrigation to get beautiful kind of small berries again like that petit verdot to get that nice concentration uh, the clusters themselves are small uh, this has in part to do with their the vine age in part to do with the bridal and a great mix of uh, that silty loam and sand throughout so you get uh, diverse texture in the grapes. Uh, so we hang the fruit basically until the snow's about to fly, um, then bring it in, and this was destemmed straight into new French oak barrels for fermentation. So a very uh, labor intensive, kind of a unique um, approach to fermentation. So you get kind of a different layer of the oak with the, the heat through fermentation um, and just being exposed to the juice. Uh, so it's on skins, just rolling the barrels on uh, kind of specially made rolling racks for uh, the cat management to keep the skins kind of wetted with the fermenting juice. And then we keep it on skins for kind of an extended maceration period just to really kind of allow everything to harmonize, uh, soften out. You kind of try to drain and press off at a 
at kind of the ideal time when the richness is together, the tannins softened out. Um, you just kind of get that pure Cab Sauve. Mm -hmm. um, almost a Cab Sauve you wouldn't believe is from BC. It has kind of that, yeah. you know, Napa style, but then you do still get that kind of elegance through it um, and that kind of acidity through the finish to sort of clean it through as opposed to just being um, a one-dimensional fruit bomb. The, the site that this comes from and the vines struggle every year to give us crop. Yes. Uh, it, you know, and it's just the lowest of low crops. Um, and so what we, what we can put into its own bottling, we do. Um, and this is just a great year to get that expression of sight and fruit together. So uh, thank you uh, to our flock members. Uh, I always enjoy kind of getting together with you. This Virtu way, virtually, virtually it uh, will be nice one day when it's not like this. Yep. Uh, welcome you to come out to the winery. Yeah, it's uh, beautiful. Join us here. Uh, but until then, we hope you enjoy the collection of wines and the, the tasting notes that go along with it. We know we have fun doing it. That's it. And email us with any questions yeah. as well. Happy to answer. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.